Kestra's MCP server is now available in beta. I'm gonna walk you through how you can get it set up on your machine so you can start interacting with Kestra using AI. So jumping straight in, on GitHub, you'll be able to find the repository. At the moment, there is just a Python MCP server, but in the future, we hope to be able to add other languages such as Java and so on. Now, when you find this repository, which will be linked in the description below, you'll find a load of information on how to get this set up. Now, first step will be to clone this repository as this has everything we need inside of it. And then we'll look at getting it set up inside of VS Code. Now I'm using Kestra Enterprise for this, but this also works fine on Kestra Open Source. Now, in order to be able to connect this up, we're gonna need a number of different properties. Once you've cloned the repository, you should be able to open VS Code with that repository, and you're gonna have a bunch of different folders. Now, what we can do is use the readme here, which I'm gonna open as a preview here, side by side, and this is going to help us get set up. Now, there are different ways you can run this. You can run this inside of a Docker container if you want. You can also just run this locally using Python tools. I'm gonna to use UV for this example. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. And I'm going to connect it in VS Code to be able to use the GitHub Copilot. Now, step one is to make your own virtual environment. We can do this with UV by typing uh, UV VM and then the version that we want to use. Now we're going to use Python 3.13, which is the most up-to-date version of Python. And then we can install the requirements.txt file that has a bunch of different properties. Now you may need to uncomment some of the stuff in the requirements.txt. You'll see that I've uncommented a few of the extras, depends on what you're trying to do. Now I'm going to use both OpenAI as well as Gemini in this example. Now the next step is to make a .vs code folder and make a new new file called mcp.json. Now we can actually copy most of this example here in, uh, as you can see here, this is basically specifying how it should run your MCP server. Now, cause we're gonna use UV to run this as that's what we're managing the virtual environment with and we've installed the dependencies. We should do which UV in our terminal to figure out where UV is installed. We're then gonna pop that in the command property here so that we can use UV when we run this. Now the next step is to now put where this repository is. And the best way to do that is if you just type in PWD in your terminal, this will give you the full address of the location. So here we can see it's under my document, under repositories, and then I've just got it in a folder called MCP server. But if you clone this from GitHub, yours should be called MCP server dash Python. And then this is going to run the uh, server.py file that we can see under the source folder. One last thing that's worth noting is in VS Code, instead of calling it uh, MCP server, we're gonna be calling it just servers. So make sure you rename that. And then as you can see here, VS Code has already recognized this and now we've got a start button. There's one extra step we need to do to get this fully working, which is to go down to the .emv file example here, which looks a little bit like this. Now, as you can see, there's a lot going on in here and we don't necessarily need all of this. So we're gonna create our own .env file and then we're gonna use this as a template. So you can see I've already got one set up here with my Kestra Enterprise instance set up, which is running on port 8086. But if you're using Kestra on the default port, that should be 8080. Because I'm using the Enterprise Edition, I have a tenant which is called Demo, but you may be, if you're using open source, the default tenant is called Main. Now again, depending on how you're doing this, I'm using an API token, but you can also use username and password as environment variables to be able to authenticate with Kestra. Now we can use one extra environment variable here to be able to disable certain bits. I'm just going to ignore that for now, but if you wanna play around with that, you can choose if you want to disable different parts of the tool. Now, other properties that I'm gonna to need to add is an OpenAI API key, which you can get from the OpenAI website, as well as a API key for Gemini, which again, you can get by going to the Google AI Studio and generating it there. Now that I've got my .env file set up and I've got my mcp.json set up, I should be able to press start now, which will open up a new terminal instance for me. And as we can see here, the server is now running. So what we can do now is open up Copilot using this button at the top right hand corner to toggle the chat and now we should be able to chat with it. So here's a few chats I had with it earlier when I was testing this out. Once we open it, we do need to change the bottom here from it will be set to ask by default, but if you set it to agent, but now it'll be able to use this MCP server rather than just talking to Copilot directly. So now we've got this all running, the best thing to do now is head over to docs and then under prompts is a bunch of different markdown files with some suggested prompts just to give you a flavor of what this MCP server can do. Now, as you can see, 
see there are a bunch of different areas. I'm going to start by just looking at flows, which is obviously one of the key parts of Kestra. So if we have a quick look at my Kestra instance, there's all sorts of things going on here related to HubSpot. So if I now go and ask it a question or find all the flows containing HubSpot, you'll see that GitHub Copilot is now going to connect directly to our MCP server. It can see that's the query that I've asked it. If I click continue, we should now get a response related. And these are in fact, all of the workflows that I had with HubSpot in the name. So we know that it's working, which is really good to see. So this example is now going to return information about flows and what they're set to. As we can see here, it's gonna check which ones have triggers that are enabled. So we can see here that this was set telling us that this is telling us that the trigger that we had available is actually disabled, as you can see here. So that's really good. Now let's ask it to disable the whole workflow. As we can see here, it's going to set the set the flow to disable. So now if I run that, perfect. So if I give this a refresh, we'll see that now the whole flow itself is disabled and it's added that property to the top. So I didn't have to give it the context of what flow I wanted it to disable. I just told it to disable the same flow. So it just shows you how powerful being able to have these natural conversations with your MCP server can really be. So now we're gonna ask it to create a new flow and I'm gonna give it the YAML here as a markdown block. So let's see what it can do with that. We can see here, I've said create a flow with this YAML, the YAML is nicely formatted. So hopefully now when we pop over to Kestra, we'll be able to see that it's going to in fact create this flow using create flow from YAML. If we want to, we can actually go over to the um, tools it used. So here flow, we can see that there are a bunch of different functions in here. And we can see here that there are in fact create flow from YAML as a function and we can see what it's actually doing in order to create that flow. And now we can see we've got a brand new flow here in the dev namespace called scheduled flow. And we can actually see here that it has in fact added it exactly like we asked. Now I'm gonna take this a next step and start doing some more advanced things such as in managing users. So here I'm going to ask it to invite a user with the email address aliceatexample.com to the group admins. So let's see what it can do without any previous setup. I'm just going to ask it to do this prompt. I'm going to press continue here and see if it's able to do that. Ah, but it didn't work because I don't have the admins group set up, but I can invite a different user without assigning any groups to avoid this issue. So let's have a look at that. Let's invite bob at example.com. It's going to invite that, has been invited. So now if we get a head over to administration and then IAM, we should be able to see that Bob was in fact invited. And we can see under invitations that Bob's invite was sent. So this is again, a very nice way of being able to manage some of these tasks that might be hidden away under menus and you can ask it multiple requests at the same time. We've got two things happening here, right? We can invite a user, we can assign them to a group and do it all in one ask. Now I'm gonna ask it to list all of the users inside of my tenement, which is demo. And so we'll be able to see here that we've got a number of different ones. And when I press continue here, you'll be able to see that I am the only user currently accepted in this instance. Now, one last example is code generation, which we're gonna use Google Gemini to help us out with here. So as you can see in this document, we've got some prompts followed by what we would expect to get from it. Now, AI, not always reliable. So what I'm gonna do here is try asking this prompt to create a flow that sends a post request to this URL. And we should get a flow that has one task that's making a HTTP request. So if I ask, a way to GitHub Copilot. Let's see what it is able to do here. So here it's gonna create a flow. We can see it's gonna create a flow and looking at the prompt here, that is looking good. So I'm gonna press continue, head back over to Kestra and we'll see that in fact it has made our flow and this looks good to me. This is a post request. It's making it to the URL that we asked. If I now press execute, we'll see that it, in fact it works as well. So very, very cool. Let's have a look at a few other examples here. Create a flow that logs hello rag to the console. Let's do that one too. We'll press continue there. And now if we go back to flows, we'll see here that in fact hello rag does exist. This is exactly what we asked for, perfect. Now let's take it a step up. Here I'm going to do a DuckDB one where we're going to ask it to read a CSV file. So I'm not gonna give it any context. I'm not gonna tell it what CSV file. I want to see what it will do. Here's an example of what it could do, but let's have a look to see what this can generate. 
and we'll have a look. Okay, so I'm gonna press continue here, let this generate, pop back to Kestra to see what it does in fact generate. And here we can see that we have a flow that has generated a CSV file like so uh, using the one we've got on Hugging Face and then it's going to query it. So now if I press execute, we'll see that it is in fact going to work successfully. And we can in fact have a look here and see all the data that the query has produced. So that gives you an overview of the Kestra MCP server, the Python edition that's currently in beta. I'd love to hear how you're getting on with it and what you're doing with it. Again, this is in beta, so give us any feedback you've got feel free to contribute PRs and open issues on things you spot. We want to make this better and improve the experience in the future. And if there's a certain type of MCP server you'd like to see, maybe in Java, then let us know in the comments below.